Hi everybody, Adrian Plass here. Yes, and Bridget. Hello. Hello, number 73. And that is significant, Adrian. Is it? Well, you're 73. Oh yeah, oh, I forgot that. <laughs> so I always sit here do. thinking, what's... Oh, well done. <laughs> so that's something, I am indeed it? 73. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, God, and today you feel it, don't you? Yes, I, I do know. a bit. I know. Anyway, right. So, first of all, thank you yet again for people sending us... Uh, emails and things and there are some things we'll come back to next week but please do do let us know ideas you have or things linked with what we've they do inspire us don't they They and sometimes they make us laugh i mean there was still one or two names i know one person who thought his middle name uh, that his parents wanted to make his middle name Clarence, and he said it made him sound like um, what is it? The la- the lion. Clarence the cross-eyed lion. <laughs> yes, I think. the cross-eyed lion. Actually, that was what he heard them discussing. <laughs> they changed their minds. We might come back to him later on next week. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. Um, Actually, it's been good to laugh because it's been a funnier week in the news, hasn't it? Well, it does seem that that there are two narratives in the world, aren't there? There's the one. That is kind of all right with the people who look after each other and try to make things a bit better. And then these jagged pieces of news about spiking people in spiking nightclubs. Spiking drinks, going out and buying something that you can use to have an effect on people when you're probably not even going to be with them. Strange. Nice. And yeah. this horrible, horrible thing about stealing bikes and using really appalling weapons in order to do it and if you just listen to that it can feel as though the world is becoming really very very dark and then i go along to something like our cafe our community cafe today and see all the, the church food. one you mean yeah, yeah see all the food brought in for the food bank and people bringing in boxes adrian the shoe box boxes mm. for christmas and yeah. and you you have to keep kind of balancing it with things you really know don't you about people there's a lot of love in the world and there's there's a lot of ignorance and a lot of the worst things are seem to involve people who haven't really thought much about anything mm. um so it, it isn't is it's not very easy even to sort that out mm-hmm. um, but you when you have to embrace the good and the bad if you want to be yeah, involved you do. You? You really and you do. also have to let's be honest we all have to jolly well embrace the fact at the moment that we can't always get what we want, you know, mm. that, um, uh, I mean, when I went into our local shop this evening and there was no bread, well, how can there be no bread? And it was because there'd been no delivery today. And, so and suddenly, why had there been no delivery? Oh, I don't know. I don't know why there'd been no delivery, but mm. it actually affected us this week, didn't it? <laughs> this business of... Uh, not being able to get the things oh, you think well, you're that, going to be it, whether it's in, petrol or whether it's... That was also embedded in our ignorance, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, gas prices, petrol, COVID numbers, not enough lorry drivers. I know all all that stuff. But then for us in our small little world, yes. our own house, uh, we needed to hire a dry wall sander. We did. Uh, first of all, I really didn't quite know what that was. <laughs> no, but we Googled except it. Except that we knew we had to, we had to sand our kitchen walls in ready to be painted so we googled it and we we rang and contact emailed a couple of the biggest firms there well, were we looked online didn't we and we saw yeah. the glossy pictures they there there was there was a a drywall sand, sander well on not, a pole. not only that but as usual there were a selection of drywall sanders. <laughs> yes but also there was all you have to do yeah. all you have to do is make a phone call no, or, know, or email i know, wasn't I know. There? Actually, we do know from experience that that is rarely the case. But this this was worse than usual. Because having worked out what a drywall sander is, and having looked at the pictures, and having got the phone number, and having rung, rung them up, it made no difference at all. Um, there were two big firms near us, and website promised everything, just what we wanted, quick phone call. And one of them uh, said, oh, well, I'm... We don't actually have them here. I'll have to contact uh, the place they come from and I'll ring you back. So I said, oh, good, that's great. So we waited and he phoned back and he said, um, the man who does them doesn't seem to be there anymore. That's right. Um, this was a huge firm. So I said, yeah, but well, are there any... national firm. Yes, but are there any drywall sanders? And he said, no, there are no drywall sanders. <laughs> so 
After a while, that phrase "drywall sander" I know begins to become, becomes more more and more meaningless. And we tried one another one who said, "Well, I think we used to do it, but I don't think we do it anymore." That's and I right, felt like yeah. saying, "Well, why have you got a jolly great picture on your website?" But the day, the danger of these things is you could begin to feel that um, I don't know that everything's sort of crumbling at the moment. Or, or, or am I just being Yeah, silly? except there is one fact about drywall sanders that I know and almost nobody else does. Okay. That is that there aren't any. <laughs> or there aren't in the two major firms that supply them, which no, is extremely then annoying. Then we spoke to a friend and he, he lent us not, not a big, glossy drywall no. sander, but a very small, a small tool that we could hold sander. in our hand and have a go with. So yeah. um, And we've done the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. So but I, I think our idea that we, we should be able to have lay our hands on the very best thing for the job hmm. is something that I don't know what you think Adrian but maybe we need to change our thinking a little bit you know that I don't know I think we've been in a culture where we assume that we can have what we want well also all sorts of things that are different I mean I remember when we were in Bangladesh way back in the year 2000 there was there was a short period when we were in the city in uh, Bangladesh where we were almost happiest in a bank. Because, <laughs> I'd forgotten about that. Because in the bank, it was it all so funny. kind of organised <laughs> and there, there were places where people stood behind <laughs> desks. And, but then you go out on the street and there's, there's a mass of traffic <laughs> rushing violently to and fro <laughs> right. and, and do you one remember man, the police yeah. wearing great big hats yes. and, and leaning against the wall so they didn't get knocked over well, not only waving that, they were their waving arms them around. on no, they <laughs> well, were waving, waving them, them on anywhere. as though as though the drivers would not go if they didn't wave them on but but the, the whole the whole health and safety thing in some of the countries we've visited is so much less than it is here mm -hmm. we we tend to assume here that someone's checked it Mm. Uh, but there often they, they mm. hadn't and now I think there is a sense that things aren't as secure as mm. they were although I know some people work very hard mm. to mm. to maintain it yes I mean we have I suppose in our teaching in churches and maybe maybe just in our expectations and maybe in what we've been told assume that you know these power tools if you're thinking in terms of spiritual ones that they we ought to be able to access them when we want them and just whenever what, what would they be then well i don't know but i was thinking you know i mean just in our church there was a baptism wasn't there last sunday mm. somebody very bravely talking from the front about their life and then even in my mind even more bravely stepping into this large paddling pool and, <laughs> yes and and yeah. i i think everybody standing there wanted for him hearing some difficulties wanted for him that the Holy Spirit would would come in all power at that moment as it did in Acts you know where mm. sudden where making that stand often meant an, a massive outflowing of something incredibly powerful mm. and at the same time maybe a realization that I don't know it's not quite like that for most people it's I wonder whether we've had too much experience because we've we've prayed with so many people and talked to so many people and, and we know that for some people there have been incredible changes very quickly. Yeah. I remember meeting a man who, who had been in prison for years who prayed a very old-fashioned prayer and whose life was completely changed by it. Yes. Not just when he was inside yeah. but when he was outside. Yeah. But I also know, we know of people who have been struggling for years having seen the the in our case because we know about it the christian faith seen it as a very attractive prospect and finding that it 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 wasn't providing what mm. they sort of thought it ought to mm. Mm. um so and everything in between <sighs> yes yeah, so and, and everything in between yeah so it's not yeah. that easy to sort out I, really and i isn't. mean if we really do trust that god knows best and it's not always easy to trust that God knows best. But if we, if we try and trust that, then, then for some people, you know, going back to our drywall sander, all right. I mean, no, it's going to sound silly, but it's going to take some people with, you know, 
with a hand tool time to scrape the old plaster off their walls stuff that's got so embedded on there things that they believe about themselves things mm. that, that 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 maybe if it all was taken away immediately they wouldn't know have a clue who they were i does that sound silly no, I understand completely, and and uh, and I know there are people, and I, I'm one of them in, in my, myself over the years. It takes a very long time to believe that it's possible for you to not exactly become somebody else, but to be the same person, but with a greater grip on who you are and what's mm. happening in your life. Mm. It's not easy, whatever people say. It's really not. No, but 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 the small things, the r if they're real then they're amazing aren't they I you know I'm constantly amazed by people I meet who who have have seemed to grasp something special about the love of God and about the Holy Spirit mm. and about what that actually means and they're not trying to big it up mm. they're they're learning to be comfortable with it, with what they are really yeah, I was, I was trying to think when you were saying that what perhaps they have in common, and if I had to, if I had to, and it's it's a very unwise thing to do, but if I were to look for something they had in common, I think it might be that those people who had discovered that against sometimes against all the odds, they were loved, mm. have found the best platform of all, mm. which is one way your self worth increases and. Mm you believe you are valued and that you have a job to mm. do mm. And those two things have worked better in people's lives than anything else i've seen yeah. that they they yeah. they believe they're loved and they believe they've been given a, a task it's a very yes. good and, beginning. and they don't feel and maybe they've been encouraged in this that they have to end up being a poster boy or poster woman poster whatever for the church or even for Jesus that they can get going where they are you know um, something that's really been striking me Adrian because obviously having somebody living with us who's a vegan mm. I spend quite a lot of time there's so much vegan food in supermarkets now mm. and most of it or an awful lot of it seems to be trying to make itself look like non-vegan products look like meat yeah. if I'm honest yeah. sort of bacon that isn't bacon chicken that isn't chicken um, beef that isn't beef burgers that aren't burgers and in, it's really odd like a sort of substitute for something real mm. with a glossy picture on the front that shows this amazing product and actually if you think about it none meat can be vibrant colorful wonderful tasty mm. spices are amazing all these things but the idea that um it's it's got to be kind of look like something else mm. and not and not be happy to be itself if you like yeah. is the thing that's been striking me mm. interesting yeah i don't know i'm that we a while ago we we did a thing didn't we about whether things were the same on the tin uh, uh, in reality as they said on the tin i think it was it somebody triggered to... it wasn't it somebody said well as far as i'm concerned it's not what it said on the tin talking about her christian life <laughs> that's right yes yeah well i mean i can remember some of it i mean and we we imagined didn't we god saying something like um um let's have a look at that label let's have a look what it says oh wait a minute that's not the original soup recipe. Jesus left a surprisingly light, wholesome sort of recipe. Um, I can't remember anything else. Tasty and unique, full <laughs> of pure, nourishing ingredients to build children up and make them strong. So what's happened to the stuff inside? <laughs> yeah, well, I I don't know. What else did God say about it? Um, well, particularly stressed, no, no harmful additives. Um, ah, well, so, who's been tampering yeah, with that? Yeah, who's then? been tampering with it? Who's been poking around and putting other bits in it? Yeah, yeah. and what about all those lumpy bits that are going to make you feel heavy and give you constant indigestion? Oh, you didn't put that in, did you, God? No, I didn't. Now we're deep into the metaphor now, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, we are. And um, here's another thing. Who created that 
bright coloured horrible gloop that tastes lovely for a couple of seconds but actually doesn't do anything for you at all it doesn't nourish you but uh, that reminds me of the bit in Malachi about the false fires where you, with things on, on the on the altar yeah. things are bright and light and then yeah. they suddenly go yeah. out and there's yeah there's nothing left well i mean you can look at things like that let's i mean the uh, yes i mean maybe the metaphor's getting a bit a bit complicated now but there's no doubt is there that sometimes you can be filled up by things you know you can hear a message you can hear something incredible and and and, and you go away and actually you feel a bit ill afterwards you feel you feel a bit a bit uh I don't know. It hasn't lasted. The taste hasn't lasted. Um, mm. As you say, um, it wasn't nourishing. And it actually leaves you feeling worse than if you'd... Um, yeah. Than if you hadn't had it at all, really. There is a problem, isn't there, with, with what we've always called conversion. Um, you know, the, the, the step you take from, for instance, being a Christian, uh, not being a Christian, to being a Christian which is the only faith thing we know about, really, isn't it? But mm. there is a problem that you can move from believing nothing and knowing nothing to becoming suddenly very excited and then suddenly embracing the whole thing. Or feeling you should. Or feeling you should, or yeah. Or people telling you you have. Or just feeling good, yeah. yeah. And yeah. and thinking, no, I've got it. Mm. No, I, and, and then you discover that it... There's quite a lot to understand and to, and to comprehend about what's mm. going on. Mm. And I, d I don't think that's easy sometimes. Well, no, it isn't. No, of course it isn't. I mean, uh, you know, if you start reading something about the, you know, the spiritual gifts, which one of you... I remember asking you when I first became a Christian, well, what gift have you got? What gift have I got? What, we were supposed to have at least one, if not oh, more yeah, than if one. Oh, yeah, not more, yeah. And as for the fruits, well, we were supposed to immediately mm. be able to show self-control and, and not, not, not hold on to wrongs and love mm. and all the rest of we it. We were and a complete fruit salad, weren't we? <laughs> at that time. Well, I think the point is that that what is the point? Maybe we've already said it that 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 sometimes it's going to take time. You're going to only have a small hand tool to use. Mm. Some people you'll see and look around and they something amazing has happened to them and for others of us it's a it's a lifetime. It's a lifetime. Mm. It's a lifetime. It's it's an interesting thing because I think we, or certainly I, tend to play down sometimes the things that have happened to us and that we've experienced mm. that have really amazed us mm. about the faith mm. that we have. Mm. Mm. And one of the reasons for that is you don't want to sound as though you're up yourself. Um, and and the other is just a feeling that there will be people who perhaps aren't haven't experienced anything and are feeling a bit but maybe that's wrong sometimes we should be talking more about the things that are are clear and bright and encouraging because there are lots of those mm. Mm. but when you're when you're feeling bereft and you you're looking at your silly tin and you're thinking well all there ever was was the recipe on the or the description on the outside and i never really discovered mm. what was uh, mm. supposed to be inside but that I mean, you're saying that, Adrian, this tin thing. We, we've gone from drywall sanders to tins of soup. I'm, I think this is one of our more confused things. But mm. I remember you saying again and again, and it's something we said to groups at Scargill, I know, is that people need the food, not the recipe. They don't mm. necessarily need the, this is how you do it. These are the ingredients you should be acquiring before you can start doing it. Yeah but the food and that's where we're all responsible for each other in order to in, in order to get rid of the stuff that's mm. that's not good for us in order to become mm. something that is nourishing for other people something and, that's and real in the middle of all that to look out for the magic yeah because there is magic um i mean within the economy of God there is magic there there are sometimes things that change yeah. in ways that we really really don't understand yeah it's a bit difficult to explain but it's a little bit like 
you know you can stay fit by walking and running and going to the gym and all the other things but when a real need comes and you need say a surgeon you're needing a, an incision a difference mm. a cut mm. a change that you can't even begin mm. to understand how you would ever do mm. so all i would say to people is when you reach that point where you've run out of your tools and your what not <laughs> other things i think we'll to leave tools and soup out of leave it leave yourself open to the possibility that god will do something yeah. which is outside our experience so far and I'm not saying that will always happen, but I think it's mm. well worth bearing in mind mm. that that mm. is part of the life, mm. part of the walk, or whatever you want want to call it. Yes, yeah. And I feel so, I feel so sorry for those who've been labouring forever and ever. I really do, and I'm really pleased for those who haven't. Uh, but as you say, let's look after each other. I think that's probably one of the most important things of yeah. all. Kindness is king. And queen, and queen mother, and, and, <laughs> and prince regent, and soup. Yeah, soup's important. Too. Anyway, <laughs> I think we're soup. we're gradually sinking into talking nonsense. So we'll see you next we week. We will. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>